In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, And she passes as the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be done to me according to your will. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh. And dwelt amongst us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For us to receive, receive you, O Lord, Lord thy grace into our hearts. hearts. That we do the passion of Christ your Son, was made known by the method of an angel, made by his passion and cross, the brought the glory of his resurrection, to the same Christ our Lord. Amen.
Good evening, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Good evening, Father. We thank God Almighty for bringing us together today to celebrate or to uh, witness another episode of our catechism. Uh, we had initially promised that our catechism would be a daily uh, program. However, we have had challenges in the last two days. Um, two days ago, we had a problem with the uh, uh, timing. Uh, as I, when I came back from work, it was late. And yesterday, yesterday something very funny happened. I actually did the streaming. I did the whole thing. And I didn't realize that for a whole 45 minutes, it was not streaming. And actually, I forgot to press the record button until I had finished and I realized it streamed for only eight minutes. And it was because of that I removed it and I decided to repeat everything I did yesterday. And so it is quite interesting. I know uh, God wanted it that way. Perhaps maybe He wanted me to explain it better. <laughs> so today we are looking at the characteristics of faith and so far we have spoken about God revealing himself to us God revealed himself to us as father God revealed himself to us as son in the person of Jesus Christ and finally God revealed himself to us in the person of the Holy Spirit one God for three persons and so my dear friends when I'm looking at our response, what is man's response to God? Man's response is to believe in God. And what does it mean to believe? What does it mean to have faith? It means to give our assent to God. That is, to give our assent to God. To tell God, yes, I agree with all that you have revealed and I have decided to align myself according to your faith according to what you have revealed i mean and last time episode seven we spoke about models of faith uh, one of them is abraham and the other is the blessed virgin mary so today we are now looking at what does it mean the characteristics of faith number one to say you believe in god that means you believe in God alone. To believe in God is to believe in God alone. So you, there, there, there is only one God. You cannot have one leg in the church and another leg outside in the worship of false gods. Faith is first of all a personal adherence of man to God. At the same time and inseparably, it is a free ascent so the whole truth that God has revealed. So faith is a free ascent. That is, it is a yes to all that God has revealed. So to believe in God also equally requires to believe in the Son, Jesus Christ. You cannot say, I believe in God and I don't believe in the Son, Jesus Christ. For a Christian, believing in God cannot be separated from believing in the one he sent, his beloved Son, in whom the Father is well pleased. God tells us to listen to him. Uh, we, we, we find this in Mark chapter 1 verse 1. Also confer Mark chapter 9 verse 7. The Lord himself said to the disciples, Believe in God. Believe also in me. John chapter 14 verse 1. So when you believe in God, you also believe that Jesus is God. No one has ever seen God. The only Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he has made him known. So Jesus is the face of God. No one has ever seen God, but Jesus has made him known. John 
chapter 1, verse 18. John 1, 18. Jesus, God made flesh. God made visible. So belief in God also requires believing in the Holy Spirit. One cannot believe in Jesus Christ without sharing in his spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who reveals to men who Jesus is. For no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the power of the Holy Spirit. We we'll find this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the power of the Holy Spirit. And who is the Holy Spirit? Is the one who searches everything, even the depths of God. No one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We we'll find this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. Only God knows God completely. Only God knows God completely. And we believe in the Holy Spirit because He is God. This is my son. You know, whenever we talk about the Trinity, it's always very confusing for the human mind. We cannot fully comprehend. We cannot really understand God. As we just read just now, only God knows God. So if you want to know God, ask the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals God to us. The Holy Spirit searches the depths of God. So God is just one, one God, and three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we'll look at, now let us come to the characteristics of faith. What does it mean when you have faith? How do you know you have faith? There are certain characteristics of faith. Number one, faith is a grace. When St. Peter confessed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus declared to him that this revelation did not come from flesh and blood, but from my Father who is in heaven. I want us to read uh, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16, I'm reading from the Community Bible. And then from this passage, we see that when somebody says, I believe in God, it, 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 it is not coming from the person. It's actually coming from God. So we see that faith is a gift. Faith is a gift. It comes from God. Matthew chapter 16, I'll read from verse 13. You see how Peter became the head of the apostles uh, because he could answer a question correctly. And he was able to answer that question according to Jesus, not by his own intelligence, but because God made it known to him. Matthew 16, verse 13. After that, Jesus came to Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They said, For some of them you are John the Baptist, for others, Elijah, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus asked them, But you, who do you say that I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, It is well for you, Simon by Jonah, for it is not flesh or blood that has revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. Dear friends, it is not flesh and blood that makes us believe in God. It is God himself who makes himself known to us. So faith is always a gift of God. It is a supernatural virtue that is infused by God into us. Before this faith can be exercised, man must have the grace of God to move and assist him. He must have the interior helps of the Holy Spirit who moves the heart and converts it to God 
who opens the eyes of the mind and makes it easy for all to accept and believe the truth. So you see, my dear friends, if you are listening to me now, if you are paying attention to this, if you are, you are live or you are, you are watching this, and you are able to understand what I am saying right now, it is because God has already done his homework on your heart. God has already prepared your heart for you to have the, the, the grace to listen to this catechism. It is the work of God. It is the hand work of God. It is God who makes it possible for you to believe. So every time you go to church and you listen to a homily and it makes sense to you, it is God who watered your heart. It is God who made it possible for you to accept his faith. Now, faith is a grace. It is a gift from God. It is not we who are made we, we, it doesn't come from us, it comes from God. However, second characteristics of, of faith, second characteristic is that faith is a human act. So as much as faith is a grace, faith is also a human act. You may wonder, is that not a contradiction? I will explain. Believing is possible only by grace and the interior helps of the Holy Spirit. So to believe is possible by the grace of God and the help of the Holy Spirit. But it is no less true that believing is an authentically human act. Trusting in God and cleaving to the truth he has revealed is contrary neither to human freedom nor to human reason. So when you say you believe in God, I believe in God, the Holy Spirit has helped you now to understand. The Holy Spirit has helped you to have that deep connection, to understand, to, to have faith. But as much as God has infused in you this supernatural virtue to believe in Him, God did not remove your human freedom or your human reason. And this is very important. That we believe in God does not stop us from being reasonable. That we believe in God does not stop us from using our common sense or from using our number six. In fact, as we shall see later, there is no contradiction between faith and reason. So as much as faith is a grace from God, faith is also a human act. In, even in human relations, it is not contrary to our dignity to believe what other persons tell us about themselves and their intentions or to trust their promises to share a communion of life with one another. So in other words, let me explain. God has told you, take this is my gift to you. That is grace, gift, coming from God. God is giving you this. God has given it to you. It is now left for you, based on your freedom and reason, to accept it and take it, oh, thank you, God, or to reject it. So as much as faith is a grace, it's coming from God, Faith, another characteristic of faith is that it is a human act. When God makes us to believe in him, when God helps us by the Holy Spirit, when God infuses himself in our heart by the power of the Holy Spirit, God does not make us dundi or robot or, <laughs> you use the word in a colloquial language, God does not make us uh, remote controlled so that we, God does not take away our choice, our ability to choose when we believe. In faith, the human intellect and will cooperate with divine grace. Believing is an act of the intellect assenting to the divine truth by command of the will moved by God through grace. So when we say we believe, 
we 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 still have the ability to doubt or to believe. We still have the ability to choose or not to choose. Let us look at faith and understanding. This is another characteristic of faith. Faith goes with understanding. What moves us to believe is not the fact that revealed truths appear as true and intelligible in the light of our natural reason. We believe because of the authority of God himself who reveals them, who can neither deceive nor be deceived. So it is not out of reason that we come to believe. We believe because of the authority of God. So that the submission of our faith might nevertheless be in accordance with reason. God will that external proofs of his revelation should be joined to the internal helps of the Holy Spirit. Thus, the miracles of Christ and the saints, prophecies, the church's growth and holiness, our fruitfulness and stability are most certain signs of divine revelation adapted to the intelligence of all. They are motives of credibility, which show that the asset of faith is by no means a blind impulse of the mind. Let me explain. As much as we believe, because of the authority of God, we also have signs to prove, to prove to us beyond doubt that God is for real. We have signs. So, um, you know, reason operates by signs, like proofs. Like, you tell me this is a Bible. I'm a reasonable person. I need to find a proof. There needs to be a proof to, to show that this is really a Bible. As much as I accept from you because you have authority, and I say, okay, ah, you are my teacher now, you cannot lie, this is a Bible. Yes, I accept from you, but at the same time, I will use my reason to find out, is it really true that this is a Bible? And I, I, how do I know if it's a Bible? I look at it and I see proofs, I see evidence, I see written word of God, I say, yes, 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 yes. This is a this is a Bible. So for us in the church, we believe in God because of the authority of God, not because of our human reason. At the same time, we have reason to support our faith. So faith is not a blind impulse. Our faith is not a blind impulse of the human mind. There is there, 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 there are signs. There are evidences. There are miracles. So as much as Jesus Christ was teaching people about the faith to believe in God, Jesus Christ was also working miracles. So that the people had every reason, the reason of faith, or, uh, or let me say, the reason of the authority of Christ himself and the Son of God, and the reason of miracles. So faith is certain. It is more certain than all human knowledge. Because it is founded on the very word of God that can never lie. Faith also, as much as it is certain, faith also seeks understanding. Faith seeks understanding. As St. Augustine will tell us, say, I believe in order to understand. And I understand the better to believe. I believe in order to understand. And I understand the better to believe. What is theology? The definition of theology is faith seeking understanding. So I believe first. Yes, I believe. After believing, now the fact that I believe in God does not stop me from questioning to know God better, to understand God more. And that is the whole essence of theology. Now, I'm not doubting that, I'm not doubting God. Rather, I'm simply asking, oh, like Mary. When the angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, oh, Mary, you are to conceive in your womb 
and you shall give birth, and you shall name him Emmanuel, the name which means God with us. Mary believed. She did not doubt. She, did, she, she, but she, but she asked a question. You know, the question she asked is a question is the way we do theology. The question Mary asks is, yes, I accept, I, I believe I'm going to be the mother of Jesus Christ. But how? Give me details. How is this going to come about? You know that I am a virgin. You know that I know no man. Am I going to get married? Is it going to be the truth? Is it going to be true? The natural means of child bearing? Questioning. Faith. Seeking understanding. And then the angel Gabriel now told her, No, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will be covered by the power of God, and you shall conceive and bear a son. Faith and science. So people often think that faith and science, they are apart. They are not apart. They are together. Faith and science, they work together. Just as faith and reason go together. That you believe in God does not mean that you stop being a reasonable person. And this is what every Christian, especially in our world today, needs to hear. The fact that you believe in God does not stop you from being reasonable. Though faith is above reason, there can never be any real discrepancy between faith and reason. Since the same God who reveals mysteries and infuses faith has bestowed the light of reason on the human mind, God cannot deny himself, nor can truth ever contradict truth. Get this. God is the one who created us. He is the one who is infusing faith in us. God is the one drawing us closer to himself because of the power of the Holy Spirit. At the same time, as much as God is drawing us closer to himself, God also gave us reason. So even though faith is above reason, but there can be no discrepancy between faith and reason. Now, do not say, I am sick, I have headache, I believe in God, so therefore, I will not use my reason, I will not take Panadol. It's a lie. It doesn't work that way because it is God himself who made us to reason. It is God himself who, who made the people who were able to discover the cure for headache. It is God himself who made those who are able to bring out Panadol and medicines to treat you. So do not say, oh, I believe, I believe for miracle healing. I am believing for miracle healing. So therefore, I am sick. I will not go to the hospital. No. It is not against faith to be reasonable. Neither is it against reason to have faith. Both of them, they work together. They both work together. So do not say, I believe. So therefore, because of my faith, eh, I will not read my books. You see some Christians today, they wouldn't read. What are they depending upon? They are depending on miracle by Biro. A Biro that will be blessed and prayed over. Maybe on the night of examination, they take this Biro. Even if you don't read, anything you write to this Biro, the teacher will give you 100%. No, no, no. This is not how it works. Faith works together with reason. Faith and reason, they go together. God cannot deny himself, nor can truth ever contradict truth. We live in a society where some people who pride themselves as men of God, we gather Christians and begin to feed them with grass and say, it's grass. When you eat this grass, your success and promotion will come your way. You give people live, live animals to swallow. Swallow this lizard. 
living lizard, swallow it, and all kinds of things. These are, these are against reason. Against reason. Look at the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ fed people. He taught people. He was with crowds of people. Never for once did Jesus Christ to tell to, to them to do anything that was against their human reason. Never. Never. Jesus Christ would never have given people uh, a stone to eat and say, because you believe in me, so therefore swallow this stone. Mm -mm, never. Dear friends, faith and reason, they are not fighting each other. They are not contradictory. Now, another characteristic of faith is freedom. Freedom. Okay. Freedom is very important when it comes to faith. To be human, man's response to God by faith must be free. And therefore, nobody is forced to embrace the faith against his will. The act of the act of faith is of its very nature a free act. To say you believe in God, the ability to say you believe in God, it means that you are exercising your freedom. And at every point in time, you remain free. That you are a Christian, that you believe in God, does not automatically put you in chains. It doesn't Make, it doesn't mean that you are no longer free anymore because God did not create us to be robots. What kind of love is there? Or what kind of person is there that says, I love you, but you are not free to walk out of this house? What love is there that, that does not give room for freedom? First John chapter 4, verse 18. He said, There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. Meaning, when you, are, when, when, when you say you love God, you are not in chain. You are not prison. You are not in prison. But today, we see some Christians, I've seen some Christians who tell me their experience that they are, they are, they are, they are so-called pastor or they are so-called man of God, I'm not mentioning names yet, told them that if they dare leave their church, that the, the miracle child that they have will die. That the miracle job they had, the miracle job will be lost. That calamities will come their way. I have even seen a video clip of a so-called man of God who was issuing curses on people simply because they left his church. No, no, that is not, that is not the way of God. One characteristic of faith is that faith, as we have said, Faith is a grace. Faith is also a human act. Faith seeks understanding. Faith does not contradict reason. Faith and reason, they don't have any discrepancy. Faith is a purely free act. You see, if God wanted to force us, eh? <laughs> God would just be pressing buttons. No! God gave us freedom. He gave us freedom so that out of our free will, so we are the ones choosing to, to serve him. We are the ones choosing to worship him. So that it is because we are free, that is why we can be held liable or not. Imagine you catch somebody. You catch somebody uh, stealing. And then the person tells you, I have no choice. He, that was how I was born. I was born to steal. I always steal. In fact, as I'm looking at you, I'm going to steal you. So just on the, just, just, just like me like that. That's the way I am. Now, if somebody is caught stealing, the person will be punished. Why will the person punish? So that the pe so that the, the, the person will not do it again. Number one. So that others who are tempted to steal will not steal. <laughs> we will punish the person because the person had a choice to walk away. The person had a choice to walk away. So that is why we are punishing the person. So also, God will not punish us except if we were free. Necessity of faith. Believing in Jesus Christ and the one who sent him for our salvation is necessary for obtaining that salvation. 
Since, as the book of Hebrews will tell us, without faith it is impossible to please God. You cannot say you come to church, you are worshipping God, and yet you don't believe in God. No, without faith we cannot please God. The book of Hebrews will, will, will tell us that. Secondly, perseverance in faith. Faith is an entirely free gift that God makes to man. We can lose this priceless gift as St. Paul indicated to St. Timothy. Wait a good warfare. Holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting conscience, certain people have made a shipwreck of their faith. So it is possible to lose faith. It is possible to walk away from God. To live, grow, and persevere in the faith until the end, we must nourish it with the word of God. We must beg the Lord to increase our faith. It must be walking through charity, abounding in hope, and rooted in the faith of the church. So it is possible to lose faith. And really, there are some people who have lost their faith. For us Christians who still believe in God, we, we need to nurture our faith. As in, we need to constantly fan it into flames. We need to feed our, our faith by nourishing it with the word of God, by prayerfulness, by praying that the Lord will increase our faith, by walking through charity, acts of charity, helping the poor, helping the needy, uh, being, being, visiting the sick, and the bereaved, and those in the hospital, those in prison. This is how we nurture and increase our faith. Just put it this way, faith increases by practice. We must practice the faith in order to increase the faith. We must keep on doing things that are in line with the faith, in order for the faith to remain not to, to be nurtured in us. Faith is the beginning of eternal life. When we speak about heaven, it begins from here. It begins by believing in God. Faith makes us taste in advance the light of the beatific vision, the goal of our journey here below. Then we shall see God face to face as he is. So faith is already the beginning of eternal life. Faith is the beginning of eternal life. So when you say, I believe in God, that you believe in God, it means that you are already in heaven. Now this is, this, this must be the reason why we often experience peace, deep, sound peace, when we entrust all our cares and worries to God. We, 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 we have a, a, little or a little taste of heaven. Faith is the beginning of eternal life. And when we say we are people of faith, then we also must be witnesses of faith. Another way we grow our faith is by witnessing to our faith, by telling people. It is then we it, it is this, it is then we must turn to the witnesses of faith, to Abraham, who in hope believed against hope, to Mary, who in a pilgrimage of faith walked into the night of faith in sharing the darkness of our son's suffering and death, and to so many others. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which claims so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. May God bless his words in our hearts. Amen. My dear friends, we have completed today's uh, catechism. I will just quickly summarize. Faith is a grace. It comes from God. Faith is a human act. Faith does not take away our ability to reason. Faith seeks understanding, which is theology. That we believe in God does not mean we cannot question God. And when we question God, we question God in order to deepen and better our faith. Thirdly, faith is a completely free act. Or let me say, fourthly, faith and science, they go together. Faith does not contradict reason. Faith requires human freedom. Freedom. We must 
to, to, to believe in God, it means that we are free. So we are always free at any time. Sixthly, uh, uh, six, faith requires perseverance. We need to practice faith in order to remain in the faith. It is possible for us to lose faith completely. And finally, we faith, uh, number seven, faith is a taste of eternal life. Faith is the beginning of the life that we shall live in heaven. So when we have faith, it means we are already swimming little by little in the, in the, in the, 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 the bliss of heaven. And finally, as people of faith, we must be witnesses of faith. I must look forward to the role models of faith as contained in the Bible. You want to continue believing in God? Then keep on watering your faith. Keep on reading the Bible. Read something from the Bible every day. Grow in faith. Remember, believing or faith in God does not, does not mean that you will not be reasonable because it is God who gave you the ability to reason it is God who is also drawing you to himself it's all is God that is drawing you to himself it's God that is also giving you reason may God bless his words in our hearts Amen. let us now present the intentions of our hearts to God as we pray the rosary I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, where he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the